for listening. Praise the Lord. God bless you. I don't know what happened to the first one I did. It just went off and it just disappeared from Facebook. <laughs> I think the devil is mad. So he's stealing my videos or something. It just disappeared. Like I can't even find the audio now. On my page. That means something is about to happen. Something good is about to happen. So I had to start another one. Feel free to share this one. Because the other one is not here again. It's gone. I remember when I did that deliverance in um New Jersey two weeks ago for the girl that was hearing voices that um they gave her a date to die September twenty ninth. Do you know at that program when I finished her deliverance on that same video, I think it was video two. I also taught you guys about how to hear from God and all. The moment we posted that video and entered video 3 on Facebook and that program, that second video where I delivered that girl just erased from Facebook. Till today we've not found it. It just disappeared from Facebook. <laughs> it's like her deliverance did something in the dark world or something. It just disappeared, but we still have it on our cam camera, so we we live streamed it from the camera when we came back. But till today, that video just pew, it's gone. Just like what we did now, we're doing now. It's on audio. I'm playing my worship, and the video just disappeared. But as well. Whenever the devil tries something, we come back and do it again. We are persistent. God bless all of you. So this is our 12 p.m. Our 12 p.m. prayer line, our prayer session, our fellowship for our three days dry fasting titled Fresh Fire. In case you are joining for the first time. You have two that you have missed. We started from 12 a.m. And then 6 a.m. And this is the third one. When we come back again at 6 p.m., it will end day one. Now, we're not eating anything for three days. We're just going to drink water when we need it. It's not water to keep you going till three days. Water as needed. So don't just sit down and drink 10 bottles of water, hoping that that will fill you up till three days, okay? If you don't have to drink water, you don't have to drink water. But if you need water, you can go ahead and drink it. So we already had some good messages on the first and second one. So if you missed it, I advise you to, to catch up and go watch it later. God bless you. So I've been feeling a little tired since we started because I believe I need rest from all this traveling. And lately when we go to the programs, we go <coughs> we go on the same day, meaning we have an early morning flight at 6. We get to the venue from the airport directly. I start the program 12 hours. I finish, go to the hotel, take a shower. I don't even sleep. I just head back to the airport again to come back. So I think that thing is a little tiring in my body. It's telling on me. Meanwhile, I have to be in Jamaica this weekend for Holy Ghost Encounter. If you leave there, I'm hoping to see you there. It's going to be powerful. And next week is Liberia. When I come back from Liberia, it's my birthday weekend, so I'm just going to do a Thanksgiving service in my studio. After that, we'll be going to London, me. I'm bringing Bishop Blessing Samuel and Pastor Isaac Samuel II to my birthday in London, and it's going to be powerful. After London, we are heading to Nigeria from there. I'm going to take Pastor Isaac with me as my guest man of God. We're going to Lagos, Port Harcourt. I'm still looking for a venue in 
Abuja. So if you leave there, help us to start looking. And then right after Nigeria, we're going to Kenya. I'm still looking for venue there. They found some in Kenya, but I, I've not liked anyone yet. And because it's still far, I'm not so bothered. And when I come back from Kenya, I will rest a little and then go to Malaysia. And then after that, next year, January is Canada. This is the tour. I've already been to several countries this year. And I believe this is the remaining ones for the, the rest of the year. It's not easy, but I was made to do this. So God makes it easy for me. So just keep sharing the flyers that come up in case you know somebody that lives in those areas. You never know who's on your page that may be interested to come. It's a Holy Ghost encounter. They will hear the word. They will be filled with the Holy Ghost. They will get their healing. They will get their deliverance. Talking about deliverance, healing. When I went to Atlanta this past weekend on Saturday... There was a lady I actually cropped out her deliverance and posted it when I came back from the program. I don't know if you guys watched it. She came from out of town for the program. She said she almost didn't come. But she said whenever she eats, it doesn't go. It just stays in her belly like a stone, like it's like she's so full or bloated. And then she said her, her left ear was deaf. She can't hear from it. When she was explaining it, I knew exactly what it was. It was a spiritual husband. And after praying for her, she says she feels light, like something left her. And instantly, her ear got healed. And we were able to test it. I had um, one of my male ushers Amazingly, in Atlanta, we had three male ushers. We had Susanna's husband, and we had um, Minister Jamar Grimsley, and we had Mavis. It's like men worked as ushers more than um, <laughs> the women. It's actually nice to see them working. Before you know it, soon we'll have more men than women in this ministry. Um. So, yeah. So, because of that, because of that, it was kind of easy because we had a lot of things that happened in Atlanta. We're going to show the first part of the Atlanta program once I finish from this prayer line. My folks in the studio are ready to show it. So we can all watch it. Yesterday we tried to show it, but we had some technical difficulty. So it only showed like one hour or something of it. But when I finish this, we'll show the first four hours because we didn't live stream it that day. So, But there was a lot of power in that video. So if you start watching it, I want you to connect and pay attention. I felt something that I felt in Germany when I went to the tour, the Europe tour. I felt it that day. In Atlanta, like I was feeling current all over my body. And see, when I first went to that venue, because they rented that church out for every kind of program. So when I went there, I didn't feel the presence of God. It's like it was lacking something. And even when Minister Philip was um, was playing the keyboard before we started, I was not feeling anything. And I told him, I said, something is not right. I don't feel... I am struggling in this place and the sound, I'm not enjoying it. So Minister Philip, I think he understands me very well. <laughs> he had to find a speaker and put close to where I was sitting. I, I started feeling it, but not all the way. So I think the first 20 minutes, we used it to worship and pray in tongues and that kind of helped. So it was amazing when I called the people out. That needed to be um, that that God was supposed to use them, but they have a blockage. When they came out, I was sitting; they were kneeling in front of me. Oh my God! I felt something so strong, 
like currents at the point I even had to tell them to touch my feet because God told me to tell them to touch my feet. It's like power was coming out like from my feet. It was even as I'm talking about it now, I'm having chills. So as you watch this video from Atlanta, I want you to connect, especially now that you're fasting. So you too can receive. There's no distance in the realm of the spirit. It was too much power. The people that were there asked them, they'll tell you. See, somebody say yes, until now I'm feeling the fire. It was too much. I'm telling you. I kept telling them, I said, the last time I felt like this was in Germany. The last day in Germany, the third day, when we couldn't end the program because we couldn't share the grace. <laughs> we just kept worshiping and speaking in tongues. <laughs> so that thing happened again. So we're going to show that at one o'clock when I'm done with this. And then when we come back for the prayer, after that six o'clock prayer, we'll show the second part of it. And then tomorrow we'll finish the last part of it. God bless all of you. Hallelujah. So when I woke up from the little nap that I had, I, I saw that some people sent in testimonies. And there was this particular testimony that I saw. This lady, this is from Marla. She said, good morning, woman of God. I have been experiencing so much pain in my left side breast for some months now. How many of you remember me praying for someone that has pain on their breast? This was on the 6 a.m. Um, prayer um, line. The one before this one, I blessed you guys and I also blessed water. But before the water, I was praying for s several cases, right? She said, I have been experiencing so much pain in my left side breast for some months now. But scared to go to the doctor. But this morning I tapped into the prayer. And now the pain is gone. Somebody shout hallelujah. Pain from several months ago. That scared her that she didn't want to go to the doctor. Maybe because she didn't want to hear what they had to say. You know sometimes when you go to the doctor they tell you oh it's cancer is this is that can be scary sometimes she said but when she tapped into the prayer that the pain is gone she said thanks be to god and thank you for allowing yourself to be used by him i had to screenshot that testimony somebody else said that they got healed from the prayer in the morning, but this was the one that I screenshotted. It's amazing how people, how people actually get their instant healing just because they were part of the audios or the videos. You never know which one will be yours. You don't know if this one is the one where you will get your deliverance. Or you don't know if it's the next one. That's why you shouldn't miss them. If you can sh watch or listen, watch. I know we have other things to do, but there are some times you don't have anything doing. Just watch. Stay at the comfort of your home and get your deliverance and get your healing. You don't have to travel to another country or spend so much money. God is bringing healing and deliverance to your home. And then I saw one of my followers share. She shared a video. She shared a video. And she tagged me. She said, same time two years ago. God bless you, Evangelist Belema Billy. When I looked at it, it was on September 7th. September, September um, 7th, 2017. Do you know that around that time, this time last year, do you know I was doing a three days dry fasting? <laughs> I was doing a three days dry fasting called, Oh Lord, end the storm. Oh Lord, end the storm. So two years ago, 2017, September 7th, around this time, 
just two days apart, because this is September 9th, right? I was doing a three days fasting, organizing one. It's so amazing that God brought me to do another one around this time. Three days fasting. When I saw it, I was like, wow. Something is about to happen. Something is about to happen. Hallelujah. So when I saw it, I had to screenshot it. How many of you have been joining the fastings with me? If you can remember, how many fastings have you done with me? Some of you started watching me in 2017. Some of you started in 2016. Some of you just started this year. Some of you started last year. How many fasting have you done with us total? Maybe some of you, this is the first one. But we've done so many. We've done a whole lot of three days. We've done seven days. We've done 12 days. We've done 11 days. We've done a bunch of dry fasting. God bless all of you for always joining and inviting your family to join it is well with you it's also good for you because it's part of your spiritual exercise that you need to keep you going hallelujah somebody said they've done a lot somebody said they cannot remember that they've done so many (laughs) hallelujah so I told you guys to Start reading the book of Mark. It's so interesting. It's actually one of my favorites in the Bible. The book of Mark. Just read. And as you're reading, make sure you're taking notes. It's going to make you fall in love with Jesus. And there's something about the book of Mark. As you start reading, you will start to think of my ministry. You will begin to see resemblance. In my ministry, when it comes to the ministry of Jesus, if you've started reading it, just reading one and two, you will start seeing some kind of resemblance. Like it's almost like you're seeing what he was doing here and what I'm doing because, of course, I'm his disciple. I want to read a part in chapter one. Remember when I came on the first audio? I was talking about how Jesus, he got baptized and he fasted for 40 days, 40 nights. Um, mm-hmm. Thank you, Jesus. How he fasted and when he fasted, he started his ministry. I was telling you guys the importance of fasting in the first um, audio that I did. Sorry if you are not hearing my voice. I'm usually a shouter, but I'm just trying to reserve my strength. It is well. So after you know fasting, starting his ministry, he started to pick his disciples. This is all in the book of Mark, chapter one. Mark actually summarizes um, some these things that I'm saying. I don't want you to rush it and read it like a storybook. I want you to actually take your time and understand what you're reading. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God just reminded me. So while the worship song was going on, God told me to pray for all of you and and cancel every evil dream. So as I'm reading this, it just reminded me of that. So let, let me take care of that right now. How many of you here have had some really bad dreams that have been troubling you? Maybe you had it today or yesterday. Or maybe you had it two months ago. Or maybe you had it a year ago, but it just keeps bothering you. And cancel every evil dream. Some people are saying they can't hear me. I had to listen on my other phone. It's very clear. Check your phone or restart your phone, sweetie. He said I should cancel every evil dream. So it may be dream from recently or dream from some time ago that whenever you think of it, you get afraid or you're worried about it. 
I want to pray and cancel it right now. Uh -huh. Somebody said they had one last night. Hallelujah. See, God is always looking out for his children. He said, cancel every, every evil dream. That's right. And as I'm praying this prayer, it's not just going to cancel what you've had in the past. It will also cancel what is yet to come. In Jesus' name. Put your right hand on your forehead. I want to pray for you. If you've had terrible dreams or you're still having them, or you recently had one and it's been troubling you, let me pray for you. For I cancel every evil dream that they may have had recently or in the past or that they are yet to have. In the name of Jesus, I destroy the power of it. I say that they will never come to pass in their lives, in their children's lives, in their family lives, in the name of Jesus. If any demon was attached to them or their family through that dream, I send those demons back to hell where they belong in the name of Jesus. If there have been any deposit, evil deposit from those dreams, I command them to come out of them and go to hell where they belong in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. You are free. And no evil dream will come to pass because they are all cancelled. Even the one that you are yet to have or the ones that you have during this fast, I cancel all of them. Destroy the power of them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody, as I told you to put your hand on your head as I was praying, I hear that you were sweating seriously on your forehead. And somebody says your heart is beating fast when I was praying. You are free. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you know anyone that has evil dream, just connect them to listen to that prayer. And they will be free to. Whatever the devil does, it only takes us less than 30 seconds to cancel it. And God will honor our words. That's why we have to stay busy because the devil keeps doing stuff. And our way of canceling or destroying things is not as difficult as their way of putting it on you. They take their time to do these things. Just like when you go to a voodoo priest... And you explain the problem. The voodoo priest takes their time to prepare a charm or do something to actually give you the result that you're asking for. It takes Sometimes it could take weeks. But with us, with the anointing, we just say a word. And that thing that took them a long time to prepare is destroyed instantly. <laughs> God is so powerful. <laughs> the devil would take time to plant something, to do something. And God... With Jesus, all we need is speak a word. And that whole plan is destroyed. My God. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Did you hear what I said? I'm so excited. Just knowing how powerful God is. I was watching Prophet T.B. Joshua. I think I've told you guys this before. And the South African lady that is, um, I think she says she's a Sangoma. Like a voodoo priest, young lady, she says she prepares charms for people, and they will come with different pictures of people, like it could be their coworker or their family member or their friend or somebody they don't care about, and they will say they want, I want her, I don't, I want her to lose her job, I want her marriage to crash, I want this, I want this to happen to her. That they're gonna list a lot of stuff, and of course it's not free; they pay for it, right? They will list a lot of stuff. And she said she would take what they said and she would tell them to give her a few days or a week or two. She would go to the graveside at night, maybe 12 midnight, and she would be looking for a grave of a man that they buried. If the person that came is a woman and she would put the picture down and put some incantation and everything, dance around and invoke the spirit of the dead and tell the spirit, um, um, this one from today, she's your wife. You will marry her, you will do this, you know, like just 
do so many things. Sometimes it takes her two weeks to do it. And then the person will start to see results of what they came for. That person will lose their job. That person and their husband will have um, will have issues. Everything that they were saying. But she said it takes some time. And then, of course, they will pay for it. But she said one day when she was watching Prophet Tibi Joshua, she said, like somebody told her about him and she watched him. She saw how he would just touch them on their forehead and spiritual husband will manifest or come out. And she's like, what? This is something that she spent a week or two weeks to put together and somebody can just order it out just like that. A hard work that she, <laughs> she said, what kind of power is this? Uh, something that she went to the graveyard to do this, to do rituals. She put some charms together and just one touch or one shout, it's gone. What kind of power is this? <laughs> That's how she ended up realizing that she was in the wrong business. She said she thought that she was one of the most powerful people. She thought the power she had was the, the most powerful thing. But when she saw what she saw on TV, she knew that there was something greater. And that's Jesus' power. So that's what I'm saying. So when you see me praying for you, I don't even need to really shout out. I could just say a word like come out of her or leave that body and go to hell where you belong. It's just me. I like to shout and I just shouted again today, right? Believe and it is gone. Oh my God. I pray that this part will show today. I called out for generational curses when I was in Atlanta. Two, um, two days ago, so I could break them. A lot of people came out in the program, mostly women, and most of what they say was a generational curse in their family were similar. Women don't get married in our family, or marriages don't last in our family, or people are dying. I think there was this particular lady, because I gave all of them the mic to speak, she said that um, um, the first son or somebody is always missing in the family or something. There were some things. I'm sure when you guys watch it, you'll relate. Make sure you tap into every prayer that I prayed in that program. So many people. So many people. Generational curse. And I was looking as they were talking. I'm like, Jesus, look at what the devil has done to people. He has afflicted a lot of families. You could see people dressed up in public and you would not even know what they're going through. You would not even know that their, their, their women and their family don't get married. They're very beautiful, but no man is trying to marry them. Men use them and dump them. You will not even know that people are dying yearly in their family. You will not even know that the same sickness that their mother died of, then they are dealing with it or something like, it was just a lot of different cases. And that's why God sends people like us. He anoints us to not only go and preach the gospel. He gave me power to also be able to free people from these things. See, I was reading Mark chapter 1 in the plane when I was going to Atlanta on Saturday. I'm going to start from verse 21. Some of you may have already read it because that was the assignment I gave you guys. Mark, right? The book of Mark. I'm going to read it and I'll explain something to you guys. It said, Jesus and his companions went to the town of Capernaum. I'm reading the NLT translation, New Living Translation. It said, Jesus and his companions went to the town of Capernaum. When the Sabbath day came, he went into the synagogue and began to teach. Note this, he went to the synagogue to teach. Meaning Jesus also was a very good teacher, right? Teacher of the teacher of the word, right? The people were amazed at his teaching. Hey, God says I should tell you guys. Thank you, Jesus. He said I should tell you guys because I have prayed to cancel your every evil dream. That from today, when you have any dream, 
that is not right. Don't let it trouble you. Just say a prayer. Cancel it. That the devil is planning to show you some evil dreams that will keep you worrying and worrying and worrying. He said, I should tell you, don't let it trouble you. It's not your fault that you had such a dream. You had no control over it. Just pray and say, Lord, I cancel this dream in the name of Jesus. And just walk away. Don't worry about it. Don't cry about it. Don't be thinking all day about it. <clears throat> As I'm reading this scripture, that just came to me. So if you're that person that when you have a dream like that, you just worry the whole day. You are scared. You're running everywhere for help. He said, just pray and cancel it and you will be fine. Thank you, Jesus. He said, he said when the Sabbath day came, he went into the synagogue and began to teach. Teach. The key word is teach. Everybody type teach. Like what I'm doing now, I'm teaching. Right? The people were amazed at his teaching. Oh my God. The people were amazed at his teaching. They were amazed. Like, wow. He said, because they said because he taught with real authority. Quite unlike the teachers of religious law. All Jesus came to do at first was to teach. But even while teaching, people were amazed. Like, wow. Let me read it in King James. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. It says, E.R.V. said they were amazed at his teaching. He did not teach like other teachers of the law. He taught like someone with authority. Meaning you could even feel the anointing just by listening to his messages. Some of you, you will say, oh, woman of God, I understand your message when you teach or when you preach. Oh my God, I just love hearing the way you explain the word. I just, yeah, that's authority. I'm not just talking. There's power in the preaching. It's not just flat. It's not like, see, eh? sometimes eh? some people, they teach, but they just sound like a lecturer. Like you're taking a Bible knowledge class in school. They're just teaching. Like a Bible knowledge teacher is not anointed. He's just a teacher. So he's just teaching you things of the Bible and you don't feel the power or the authority in the message, you're just hearing the the story that happened. Now, a servant of God that is anointed by God may be teaching you that same thing that that teacher of CRK or Bible knowledge taught in school. But this time you are feeling it like you are amazed. You're like, wow. It's like there's so much revelation, so much rima. It's just, it's just, it's just different from the one that taught it in your class the teacher that taught it in school because you that person is anointed and the other one is just a lecturer now from what i'm reading here it's saying that he taught with real authority quite unlike the teachers of the religious law so may, basically the other teachers that they've been used to that they're used to listening the other teachers that they've been listening to, those teachers are like those teachers that I'm talking about in the classroom when we were taking Christian um, religious knowledge. They did not feel anything in the message. They were just listening. It was just like they're telling a story, but they were not feeling any power or anything as they listened to them. So while Jesus was just teaching, they were just amazed because as he was teaching, it's like God was speaking to them and it's like something was happening to them at the same time as they were listening to the message. He said, suddenly a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out. He said, while he was doing this teaching, with so much anointing, of course, I'm sure when Jesus was teaching, the whole atmosphere was probably quiet, just like in my programs. You see me preaching and everybody is just focused on me and listening. Even children are listening and before you know it, it's 12 hours. Just imagine the atmosphere like you just feel the presence of God once you walk into that place, right? It is suddenly a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit, cried out. So while Jesus is busy teaching people, suddenly somebody's like, leave us alone. Go away from here. 
What is this? Like the anointing, the fire was too much. The demons started to manifest. But that's not why Jesus like came at first. He just came to teach. But because of the kind of anointing he carried, because of the power in his teaching, because of the presence of God that he carries, demons were trembling. They couldn't take it no more. The fire was too much in that place. But these things never happened when the other teachers of the, of the, of the, whatever, the law were preaching or teaching. Nobody manifested because there was no power to, to trigger any manifestation. It was just like teaching in school. But Jesus came with a different thing. Something that they had never experienced. And one demon could not take it no more. He had to manifest. Why are you interfering with us? Jesus of Nazareth. So like you will see somebody speaking this. Just like you see in the programs. Leave me alone. She's my wife. Leave her. I want to kill her. I want to destroy her. It's because of the anointing. The power of God. The fire. They can't take it. It's too much. They have been hiding and tolerating. You see demons eh? See, they can be, maybe you entered at 8 o'clock and they started feeling, the person is already feeling their heart is beating fast. The person is already sweating. The demon is enduring it. They don't want to show themselves. They don't want to manifest. But while you are still there talking at 12 or be 30 minutes later, this demon is like, man, I can't take this no more. Why is she doing this to me? And then they start to manifest. Some of them don't manifest. They just leave <laughs> because it's too hard for them. He said, why are you interfering with us? Jesus of Nazareth. Have you come to destroy us? Are you listening? He said, us. Hey. When I was reading it, I said, wow. He said, us. Have you come to destroy us? See, when I read this Bible, I just see my ministry. And it's so easy to understand because a lot of these things, I've encountered it. In my programs, online, or something. So, it's so it's real real to me. Because it's something that happens with the ministry that God has given me. So, it's like I'm just seeing it repeat itself. It says, have you come to destroy us? I've, why are you interfering with us? What does that mean? It means that there are many. You know how they always say we are many. <laughs> it means that this man... Does not have only one demon. Eh? This man has a lot of demons in him. Because nobody could deliver him all this while. And apparently it looked like this man is going to church all the time. Yeah because he was in that place while Jesus was teaching. But there's not been any fire that made such a demon manifest. And now we are hearing from the demon that. They are us, us, meaning they could be 1,000, they could be 300, they could be 7, they could be 10, they could be 20, they could be a whole lot. You say, why are you interfering with us? But what was Jesus doing? He was just teaching. He did not shout out, everybody, no, 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 no. He was just teaching. And the demons are mad. Why are you interfering with us? Jesus of Nazareth. See, see, see. The demons, they knew his name. Hey, hey, hey. See, the demons knew his name. They knew who he was. He said, have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. The Holy One of God. Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. Now, when he say, I know who you are, of course, you know, that's the devil himself speaking. You are the Holy One of God. The people there, they not even know who Jesus was at that time. But these demons, they knew. And it's not like he had made a proper introduction of himself. But he didn't really need to do that for the demons to know. See, demons, they know the ones that can cast them out. They know the ones that are just there, just playing and wasting time. They know us. They know the ones that God has called. They know the ones that call themselves. They know the ones that are 
keeping themselves holy. See, do you know demons know things you do? Demons have embarrassed people before while they are doing deliverance. Demons are just exposing them, telling people what they did. And you are here coming to cast me out. You forgot what you did with it. Like, demons know these things. They know. They know. <laughs> they know. They are spirits. They see things. They know things. That's right. They know your weakness. They know your fears. They know as you are dealing with them, they know if you are currently afraid. As you are doing the deliverance, they know if you are afraid. They will say, I can see you are afraid already. <laughs> they will be laughing. And people will be like, woman of God is not afraid. But the person that is doing it, they know because deep down they are afraid. And they are wondering how this demon knows. They know these things. I'm telling you, this deliverance of a thing, if God did not anoint you for it, it can kill you. But of course, Jesus was ready for this. Remember, he went there with intentions of teaching and demons started to manifest. But Jesus reprimanded him, be quiet, come out of the man. He told the demon to stop speaking. Right? He told the demon to stop speaking. Because the demon was about to reveal so much about him. And at that time, he didn't want them to... So he didn't want the demons to say much about him because he didn't want the people there to know so much about him. So he shut the demon up and he said, be quiet. Come out of the man, he ordered. At that, the evil spirit screamed when he said, come out of him. Ah! I do a lot of deliverance where sometimes before they fall down on the floor, there's a scream that comes out or something. The evil spirit screamed. This thing still happens till today. And threw the man into a convulsion. You know how they will be shaking. Shaking shaking seriously. And then came out of him. How many of you. As I'm reading this. How many of you have seen this happen. In this ministry. I'm not talking about other ministries right now. Let's focus on my ministry that God gave me. Let's not confuse it and go everywhere else. Let's stay here. How many of you have seen what I just re read now. Happen maybe at one of my programs because you guys that then don't come you watch online or maybe on live video when I call people to pray for them. How many of you have seen somebody like when I'm praying they are talking something is talking out of them and suddenly the thing is shaking and then they fall or something. Uh huh. A lot of you have seen it, but do you know that there are some believers that they will see these things and they will call us evil people. And then you wonder if they read their Bible. You're like, isn't this the same exact thing that Jesus was doing? <laughs> and you're asking, what part of the Bible do you normally read? Because if you read about Jesus, this is something that happened throughout his ministry. He cast out a lot of demons. Have you not seen some people that are even pastors because they don't have this power that we're talking about here? They criticize us that are doing deliverance, a lot of deliverance. And they say it's not right, it's this, it's demonic. But I'm reading right now and Jesus was doing it. It says that, that the evil spirit screamed threw the man into a convulsion and then came out of him. Amazement gripped the audience and they began to discuss what had happened. Like people were shocked. You understand? People were shocked. Wow, what is this? And they began to discuss what had happened. And listen to what they say. They say, what sort of a new teaching is this? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> As I'm reading this part, my whole body is vibrating right now. It says, what sort of new teaching is this? Like we've never seen. It said they ask excitedly. It has, it has such authority that even evil spirits obey his orders. We were thinking that the teaching was powerful. Now we are seeing him command evil spirits and they just have to go without even complaining. What sort of a new teaching is this? Jesus introduced something new that they had never seen. And that's that thing that we do. We that are his disciples, we follow in his footsteps. 
And to some people, it's strange because they don't even read about Jesus. They said, what sort of a new teaching is this? It has such authority, even evil spirits obey his others. In King James Version, it says, And they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirit, and they do obey him. I mean, no matter how a demon tries to say, I'm not going, da, 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 da. when I say come out, you come out. And these days, I don't even like to go back and forth with demons because as far as I'm concerned, they are powerless. I've been given authority to kick them out. I remember in Atlanta program, I was praying for them for moving objects. And after the prayer, I asked a few of them and they said they don't feel it anymore. Some of them fell down. They say something pushed them and something they've had for years. They don't feel it anymore. And then one lady came like maybe one or two hours later. She came back when I was praying for another category of people. She said, woman of God, when you were praying for the moving object, it stopped. And when I went to the seat later, I noticed it started moving on my head again. That please uh, pray for me that everywhere I go, they pray for me, but I never manifest. You're the only one that prayed for me and I manifested, but it's still there. I say, sweetie, guess what? Now that you are telling me everywhere you've gone to, it means... So many people have prayed for you. Me, I have already commanded it to go. And as far as I'm concerned, it is gone. Now, if you welcomed it back or if you're entertaining it or if you're feeling like you need something stronger, I can't help you. Go back to your seat. I didn't pray for that woman again. Because some of these people, eh, they give so much power to demons. They feel like you have to do so much. Like you have to remove your clothes and fight battle or something. It's not that serious. I just need to say, come out and it will come out. But now if you don't believe that thing that I said, it's not going to go anywhere. Or if you feel like, well, that's not good enough. I need more prayer than that. Oh my God, you will have that thing forever. And I'm not going to sit here and go back and forth with your demons that you're not ready to let go of. I told her, I said, go back and sit. Because this work we do, we know what God has told us. We know the power that has been given to us. We speak that word. And he honors it. If the person on the other end does not believe, that's something they have to deal with. I need to go on to the next person because I have so much work to do. So I told her, go and sit down. This thing, I'm not trying to show power. I already know power has been given to me. But you need to exercise faith. I say, I've already prayed. When it moves, you say, you know what? The woman of God has declared me free and I am free. You probably need to speak that for a few days. And that demon will have no choice but to leave. But if he sees that you are still entertaining it, still accommodating it, it's going to stay there for a long time. And you will go to every place and nothing will happen. I'm teaching you guys something here. We have been given power to do these things. And this power is greater than any power out there. This is the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Do you understand? So if with this power and this authority that we have, all we need to speak is just one word. We don't even need to shout. See, I don't even need to speak a word. I can just imagine it. I can just, I've used my mind to cast out demons before. I looked at somebody. I didn't say anything, but I used my mind to command it to go. And I say, check yourself. And they say, oh my God, it's gone. I don't feel the pain. I don't feel that. Yeah. Because I know the power that I've been given. So when people come and say, oh, I prayed, you prayed, and uh, uh, everybody has prayed, and it's the, I say, sweetie, bye. I've already prayed for you. And me, I'm so blunt. I don't do things to please you guys because, see, eh, some people, no matter how you try to please them, you can never please them. I don't care what people say. If you feel like you need to kick it out, then you go do it. As for me, I've already done my part. See, there are some people you want to kill yourself over their demon. And these people are not even ready to let go of the demon. And then the demon will come and start attacking you and your family. You spend 10 hours on them. And as you are leaving them, they are going to commit sin. As you are leaving them, they are even going to call another pastor without even telling the pastor that this other woman of God just spends so much time on them. Like some of these people, it's not even worth it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not worth it. I've seen some people that I will spend time on my video praying for them. They will testify. 
The next day or that evening, they are on another man's video that Facebook will tell you this person is a guest, is live on this person's video. The same thing they told me on my video is what they are telling this man. And they don't ever mention that another person prayed for them yesterday. <laughs> We've seen so many things though. And you're like, is it even worth killing yourself over these people? Do you know, I was even telling Pastor Isaac, was it yesterday, when I did the deliverance from um, one woman of God from giant demon, right? Now, before that deliverance, when that woman of God was messaging me, she would tell me that, oh, every pastor that have she has gone to, that came into her life, they all tried to sleep with her, that they all did her wrong and everything. And I told Pastor Isaac, I said, this one that is complaining that everybody that has come into her life did her wrong and wanted to sleep with her, is she like most Miss, Miss, Miss America or something? Is she very beautiful that they all want to sleep with? I said, Pastor, I'm, I'm, I'm always afraid of people like this because tomorrow... They will say something bad about me. Oh, I remember that day so well. And I even ignored her message. She had to go message one of my girls, Andra, to message me. Because after that conversation, I'm like, this woman, mm, 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 something wrong about this one. But see, it's God that led me to deal with this one. Otherwise, I never would have even prayed for this one. Do you know that when she came to my program in Philadelphia, it was even me that gave her money to come. She said it was for me to borrow her money and all that. A giant demon manifested. Let me tell you, eh? When I kicked that thing out, we even gave her money. We took offering from there, gave her money and all of that. I even gave her money. I told her not to pay me that money back. All of that thing, you guys saw it. It all happened on video, right? Since I have been doing ministry since 2016, August, I have never heard or seen any giant demon in my dream or while I'm doing deliverance. That was the first time. Guess what? After her deliverance, I saw a giant demon appear in my dream. <laughs> this demon is huge. It's like... The way I saw him is like a is like a wrestler that has more soul and everything tall and big and strong. And I saw that I was in a room full with people. I say I've never seen this in my life. Just because I went to pray for this one. Now I'm dealing with the demons that I kick out of her. Risking my life. See, if God did not send you to do something, don't do it. Otherwise, you will die. I'm telling you, you will die. And the people you even helped, they may even go and start saying things about you. Oh, she wasn't even powerful. Be careful. Don't try to impress anyone. Always be led by the Spirit of God. Sometimes if you're not led to pray for somebody, don't pray for them. I was led to pray for her. And God protected me. Otherwise, I would have been dead. I was in a room filled with people. And this giant came into the room. It's like the room was locked up and he will carry one person up and he will break them into two. Oh my God. I can never forget this. It was so real. He will lift them up. Like he will use one hand to hold their head, another hand to hold their legs together. And he will just break them the way people break cookie, like into half and he will throw them away. He will get the next person. The room was full of people, maybe like 200 people. I don't know if they were pastors. Maybe God is showing me how people die after they do prayers for people or something. He carried, he broke. He even got to one particular person. And he said, you, I like you, but I'm just going to hurt you a little bit. And that one, he broke, I think, one leg or something of that one and threw away. Until we were only three of us left in that room. Oh, I can never forget this dream. I have never had this kind of dream in my life. I've never seen any kind of giant like that in my dreams before. We were three in the room left. Suddenly, I saw a man in white suit, white trouser, white suit, and wings come in. And I recognize him because that's the angel I always see, but he never always appears in white. Sometimes he appears in regular outfit. In fact, I've never seen him with his wings before. But I know him because every night when I sleep, I always see him. Like we go to things together, we fight together and all, all that. So he walked into the room. 
Oh, I, as I'm talking now, I see him coming. Like he walked into the room and came straight to me and he used one hand to lift me up and put me on his shoulder. And I said, oh my God, I finally get to see you with your wings because I've never seen him with wings before. And I even touched the wings. I saw that there was something like a little wire or iron connecting the wings. And I was touching it. And he was carrying me. He just put me on his shoulder. And the other two that were left. It's like I was telling them bye bye or something. But I knew that that, that giant demon was going to kill them. And when I woke up. It's like I was still touching the wings. My hand my finger were doing like I was touching something. I started to pray. I said, Father, thank you for protection. Thank you. I, 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 thank God that you, you really sent me for this. They would have killed me. You would have seen that somebody slept and never woke up. That's how some people die. You don't know the battle that they fought in the dream. Sometimes it's from praying for somebody. And these people, they are not always grateful. You guys saw how this woman turned out? She pretended, she pretended like she was humble and everything, but she wasn't. She was trying to get something from me. And I even exposed her to my audience and everything. See, everything I did was, was as I was led because I don't really have any feelings for the lady. I don't even know her. I even avoided her for some time, but I had a strong leading to even go and celebrate her in California. I spent money to do all that. Do you know, after this woman did what she did, by betraying me and trying to use my followers against me. I pray to God. I say, Father, don't send me anyone like this anymore. Don't help. Don't let me bless or celebrate anyone. I don't want to be close to none of these people, Lord. I'm okay the way I am. But it's not my work that I'm doing. It's God's work. I almost lost my life. Delivering a woman of God that had a giant demon for two years. That no one could deliver her. Not even the one she calls her papa. It was me, the girl on Facebook, that she ended up calling agent of darkness and spoiling my name and everything that risked my life. I can never forget this dream. See, as I was telling you guys this dream, I saw that angel clearly. It's like he was walking up to me again. He came and he used one hand to lift me and put me on, on, on his shoulder. I had a dream of giant twice and I was telling Pastor Isaac, I say, how come I never heard of giant demons or encountered any of the giant demons in my dream? There was one time I did a powerful deliverance video on Facebook. A lot of people got free and everything. I went to sleep that night. Two demons came to my bedside. One was huge, tall, and one had muscles. And they came to my bedside and they say, we have finally got you. Now we get to kill you. I say, why? They say, because we are playing a game. You catch us, you kill us. We catch you, you kill you. You've been catching us. Now we caught you. And I say, but if you kill me, how am I going to do what God wants me to do? I say, you can't kill me. I can't die now. And then before you know, I overpowered them, but it felt so real. I was on my bed to the left side, like two guys were standing there. They said, "We've that day, I knew the way that video went. A lot of people got free. I knew that my dream will continue with fighting. But because I was sent for this, because I, I have protection, I'm not afraid. So there are some people you spend so much time, you risk your life, you pray for them and do all of that. And they still don't appreciate, they still don't even believe they are free. They keep going around looking for somebody else to pray for them. But you just risked your life and you took their battle. <laughs> you don't know, whenever I pray for you, I carry up your problem. Your problem becomes my problem. <laughs> now I am dealing with that demon and say, you know what, leave her alone. Come to me if you want. The power in me will finish you. So now the demon has no case with you anymore. He has a case with me. So you be careful. That's why you see servants of God. The other day my bishop was talking, I think two or three days in his video, of how some people will spoil a man of God and you followers will be so gullible. You will listen. One lady was telling him, and Bishop, I, I, I used to follow you, but somebody said something bad about you and I stopped watching you, but I'm sorry, I'm back, sorry. And he said, see, 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 I'm the one that is blessing you. I'm the one that is praying for you. I'm the one that is teaching you the word of God. See, if you leave and you don't watch me, it's okay, no problem. 
He said, it's okay, no problem, leave. But you are the one that really need me a lot because I'm the one praying for you, prophesying to you, doing, risking my life, doing all this for you. And you are doing like you not watching me will hurt me. My dear, carry your problem and go. See, let me tell you, when God gives you a servant of God that is highly anointed, that's the best gift you can ever have. You need to honor them. You need to respect them. You need to pray for them. You need to value them. Because it's not so many people out there that are anointed again. A lot of people are going to seek for power elsewhere because the power that God gives, they feel like they have to do so much to get it or they feel like they cannot wait to get it. They want something quick, 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 quick. So they go to the devil and you can always tell when it's not from God. Don't let people pull you away from that gift that God gave you. It's not common to see servants of God that carry power the same way that Jesus carried power. Even those people were amazed. They say, we've never heard it like this. What kind of new teaching is this? What kind of new doctrine is this? Even demons obey him. Meaning all their life in that town, they've never seen anybody like that. I'm telling you, be careful. So whenever I pray for you, I'm adding new demons to the list. New demons that will hate me. There are some of you that they've caged you and your family for years. And I take up your case and I pray for you. Oh my God, those demons are pissed off. Who is this woman? I am one fearless woman of God. Coming on Facebook is even a very big risk because see, Facebook is a place where you see everyone. Voodoo priest. I have some people following me. Their father is voodoo priest. There's one particular one. I think she's in um, Dublin. She came to my program in Dubai and Dublin. She told me her father is a native doctor, voodoo, strong voodoo priest. <laughs> very strong voodoo priest. Very strong voodoo priest. But I pray for her. She watches my video. So guess what? That father has me on his list as an enemy that is freeing his daughter or something. So just imagine the, the people's list that I'm on. Millions of them because I pray for you. Sometimes just you watching my deliverance video when I'm sleeping. I just added another one <laughs> to the list. And I was sleeping when you were watching it. When somebody's in the hospital, they watch and they're free. The demons are wondering, who is this woman of God? Guess what? Another one has been added to the list. So you need to thank God for giving you such a gift that is not common. The few that are out there, the devil is bent on destroying them. And he will use their own members to finish them. Imagine a woman that I delivered, even gave money, celebrated. See how she turned out. As a matter of fact, after the 6 a.m. prayer line, one of my followers sent me um, um, a recording. Right? I'm going to play it so everybody can hear it. Just listen. Because people are not really who they seem to be these days. Sometimes after you risk your life for them, I'm so careful. Eh? Let me just tell you, I'm so careful. I've always been careful. But most times the ones that you do so much for, the devil uses those ones to get to you. Now before, like when I did Blessing Jackson Deliverance, you guys don't even know the kind of attacks that were coming. One time before I even prayed for her online, I saw her husband and his sister appear in my dream and they pretended like they needed prayer. And when I was trying to pray for them, the sister grabbed me and I, I told you guys, the man looked exactly like the man in the picture that she showed. And I cursed them and I put leprosy on them. Like I actually saw them in my dream pretending to come to me like they needed prayer. And when the lady grabbed me, when I put hand on her forehead, I felt the grabbing on my bed. <laughs> I felt like I was being grabbed on my bed. In fact, recently, was it four days ago? I had a dream. I think a dream the day before I went to um, uh, 
um, what's it called, Atlanta. And in that dream, I was about to deal with a witch. And I told the guy and the girl there to help me hold that. And they said they can't hold that. They're afraid. I say, what? Okay. So when I finished with the witch, an older lady, and I called the lady. I say, you come. Let me pray for you since you refuse to hold that. While I was praying for her, this was my dream. This is all I do in my dream. I'm always doing deliverance or healing or preaching. I do more in my dream than I even do in real life. So while I was praying for her, suddenly she became small like a child, like a two-year-old child, light-skinned little girl. And I started praying. I said, I call your body back into you. Wherever your body is, I call you back. I've never dealt with a case like this, but sometimes God will be showing me things that I've never seen. So in case it happens in future, I don't know if I'll ever see where I'll pray for an adult and the adult will shrink to a baby. I don't know. In case I pray for you and you now turn to a two-year-old. <laughs> in case I pray for you <laughs> and the prayer shrink you. <laughs> oh my god. I said I was praying for this woman and she just shrinked to a, like a two year old baby. <laughs> and I said it, I, I remember it so vividly. I had it like a few days ago. I said, I call your body back, your, your body back here. Wherever your body has been trapped, I call you back. <laughs> so when I was praying that, suddenly it's like the woman came out from, from under the bed with long fingernails. And she started to come from my back or something and was like trying to scratch the back of my neck. And I was trying to turn to see this person, but she kept, I could feel the nails on my bed, long nails. Like, you know, when you go to the nail shop to do your nails, but you didn't let them crop it off. You let it long like that. So immediately when I woke up, guess what people to tell you how real this is. My neck, the back of my neck was peppering me like somebody had scattered it with pinching. I say, I woke up and it felt like, you know, when somebody wound you and then they pour something like something hot that is making it burn. My neck, the back of my neck. See, this was a dream, oh, but it was not really a dream. It was something that was happening. The neck was like peppering me and I got upset when I woke up. I said, Lord, what is this? Is it because of this tour that I'm taking? Because, you know, I'm going to some dangerous countries, man. I'm going to be dealing with some witches. I'm going to be freeing some people that they have said they will never be free. And now God is taking me to them. So now I guess all the witches are combining and they're... my neck was peppering me. You know how some of you wake up from sleep and you say you saw marks all over your body. My neck, because it was the back of my neck, I don't, I can't see what's there, but I was feeling like somebody had finished me there. I started to pray when I woke up and after praying, I sent fire. I told my angel, I specifically said, I said, remember that day in the dream that people were shooting fire at me and you shot one fire and it uprooted the building. I said, I want that kind of fire right now. Send it to anyone that was part of this and I need you to touch my neck now. And I needed to be healed. Suddenly, I started feeling heat on my neck. And instantly, I didn't feel the pain or the sting again. See, me, God has called me, so I am ready for this. And whenever they try to attack, the more power I get, the more angry I want to do more. I want to do more. Like some people, they will do their one thing and they will run and say, I'm not doing it again. Me, no, that's the time that I want to come and do more. <laughs> So the, I, I told the angel, I said, remember that time in that dream, they were shooting fire at me and you shot one and it uprooted the building. I need that kind of fire sent to all of them, wherever they are. I don't care what country, I'm still going to go there. Now I need you to lay hands on my neck and I want that pain to go. Suddenly I started feeling heat on the back of my neck and suddenly everything just left. So the battle was not in the sleep only. It was real. Now I don't know where that attack is coming from. Guess what? It's probably coming from Jamaica or Liberia or Nigeria or Kenya or Malaysia or Canada or America or a combination of all of them. 
Because guess what? Since I announced that tour that I'm coming, you don't know that witches are not happy. You don't know that demons are not happy. They're like, this woman is coming. Oh my God. This is not going to be good for us. Oh, this woman that we trapped now, this woman will free her. This man that we trapped now, this one will free her. Hey, we need to do something to stop this woman. We need to do something to do this. Do you see what I'm saying? So what we do is risky, but because God sent me, he has always been protecting and he has kept me till this time. And that's why every time you see me, I come out strong. Some of you worry, how is she doing? What is that? My dear, nothing they happen. I did fine. <laughs> so somebody sent me this, you know, talking about how you risk your life or you do so much for these people and some of them turn out against you. She sent me this. I did not want to listen to it, but God told me to listen to it. And now I'm led to play it so you guys can see. Remember I was talking about a woman of God that I risked my life to pray for and she turned out evil. Let me play this for you guys. It came around 7.52 a.m. this morning. I'm going to play it now. Hello, woman of God. God bless you. Good evening, ma'am. God bless you. God bless you. And how is the family over there? This woman of God, there is something I've been thinking of uh, discussing with you for some days now. Please forgive me. Don't be angry with me. It's just a... Uh, I don't know, it was a fast year. I saw Jesus in my dream. He asked me to do a, a, a whole day fasting. I have to fast for one day. So I obeyed and I fasted. But uh, when I was uh, sitting there in my bed, like when God wants to show me something, it's always like this, like I'm feeling dizzy, tired. And I was reading Bible in my bed here. So just like I was out of my body or something. And uh, I heard a voice. I saw your follower. I saw your follower and uh, I was standing there. A voice was telling me that uh, this is your follower. She's preacher, so she loves you so much. She admires you. She's always saying good things about you. She's so much in love with you. This is why I'm afraid to share it with you for some time now, for some days now, because I know this person loves you so much. I heard the voice, I was standing and the voice was telling me that uh, this person is going to do to you, like what this woman, uh, what is her name, this woman, uh, the one you deliver from a giant demon, I don't want to make sure her name, they, that, we are Reverend Eunice, so that uh, this lady that is saying she loves you so much, she's going to also be like her later, in time to come, so... In that uh, revelation, so uh, when uh, when I was standing there, I saw this uh, lady. She was really laughing with you, but um, God, God have mercy upon me. I know it's God. I'm saying it's God because I was praying, fasting. This is why I'm afraid to show it, to say it to you, woman of God. So I don't know if it is devil. May the devil not speak through me in Jesus' name. So I saw your stomach was open a little bit where there is never in the stomach. There was a very big book or a big Bible inside your stomach. Very big, really very big one, massive one. And then it was uh, blue at the backside written. Uh, something was written on it with blue and white, like the way your T-shirt, the one you share for us, this white one, you shall love the Lord. So, and something was written on it. So this this massive book or Bible that was inside your stomach, the people they could see it. I was there, standing there. I was looking at the book. I was admiring. I said, "Wow, this is very beautiful and big." But the person, this lady, I'm telling you about preaching on Facebook, talking so much about you. She was sitting on a bench close to you, but you was just relaxing on them, something like a mattress, relax with white, you know, discussing and preach your soul. But this lady was after this book in your stomach, even this woman that that um, disappointed you before, she was, I saw her in like in the dream that she was after that book in your stomach. So this lady was really after this book in your stomach, admiring it, like she wants to have something like it, like she was stretching her hand. And her leg towards this book in your stomach. She was on a bench. Even her buttons was almost falling out of the bench. She was. 
she was almost falling out of the bench because she was stretching her hands and legs towards this book in your stomach like she wants to carry the book but she could not uh, touch the book she could not carry it but she was laughing with you smiling and yeah but her eyes was inside was in this book that she won't like this book was like oh so powerful like wow so much things on it ways done so much things like nobody that will say that we not admire it but these women they were like they need that thing this this gift this book you have it was like a gift they need it but they could not get it so it started bringing jealousy to them this thing was making them to feel jealous and feel bad and i heard the voice and the voice said to me she will be like this woman she will act like her this woman that uh, disappoints you a long time ago yeah so this woman of god yeah this was uh, the dream or a vision i don't know what to call it and I've been thinking of discussing it with you since then. Something is telling me how. Don't don't tell it to her. She will be so angry with you. And why do you have to tell her she's a woman of God? God can show it to her herself. She will see it herself. Instead of you just ordinary follower. Something is telling me like this. But like a cool voice coming with, with peace. It's like share it with her. Discuss it with her. So, so I'm so sorry, woman of God. Please don't be offended. And uh, so uh, I'm... I just feel like discussing it with you, ma. Praise the Lord. And then when I asked her, I said, who is this lady? She sent another recording with the name of the lady that she saw in the dream. And, they, and then I said, it is well. I said, she said, amen. I said, pray for her. She said, okay, ma. Listen to what I said. I said, pray for her. She said, okay, ma. I said, because anyone can be used by the devil, even you. <laughs> I said, pray for her. She said, okay, ma. I said, because anyone can be used by the devil, even you. She said, yes, woman of God. I said, God bless you for sharing. It is well with you. Now, what I said, if you notice in that dream or whatever she had, in that dream or whatever she asked, hmm. Hold on, guys. In that dream or whatever she had, the person was not bad in the beginning. She said the person, they say that the person will be bad later. See, anyone can be bad later. Even some of you here commenting now. Initially, maybe that's not your intention. But when devil sees that this person has helped you so much, or this person has been a blessing, he will start coming to whisper to you. Any one of you here can fall for this thing. I'm telling you, I know the way this devil works. Do you know how many times he's tried to talk to me about my bishop without nobody telling me anything? Do you know how many times devil has come to me to whisper things about my bishop? <laughs> if not like me, I have a strong mind or God help me. Maybe by now, I would not even be around my bishop again. See, I'm teaching you guys something. We're not trying to come here and call anyone. Some people genuinely love you. Some of them, they came with evil intentions from the beginning. But there are some that there was never an evil intention. It was love all the way. But along the line, after you have done so much for them, the devil started speaking to them. And maybe jealousy kicked in and they changed. But initially, they were not like that. And that's why sometimes you get so disappointed. Now, there are some that from the beginning, they came with that mind, but they were pretending to be good, pretending and acting like they are humble. Meanwhile, it was all false humility. Those ones from the beginning, they were like that. But there are many that never had such intention from the beginning. They loved you from the beginning. They were ready to serve. They were ready to do whatever. But along the line, the devil started to manipulate them. That's why I say pray for her. Because anyone can be used by the devil. Even you. Because now, just because she's the one that got this and is showing it to me or sending it, it doesn't mean that she, she cannot be manipulated. 
Even me as a woman of God, I can be manipulated if I allow the devil. You don't know. Have you not seen men of God talk bad about men of God or women of God talk? Yes. Sometimes they are manipulated and they don't know and they still think it's the Holy Spirit speaking to them. I don't know. For some reason, while I was talking, God told me to, to, um, to play it for you guys to listen. And I believe that God knew exactly what he was doing because she never mentioned the girl's name until I asked and she did another audio. Because she had mentioned her name from the beginning, I probably would not play it. But there are so many people that preach online now that love me and talk about me. You understand what I'm saying? Now, sometimes some of them probably don't have any intention of doing this now. But the devil is planning them. Or maybe some of them have. Since I finished with Reverend Eunice, eh? that woman, I have been careful I beg God, I say, Father, I don't want, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to do this for nobody again. Everybody mind their business. Let them just receive the general prayer that I pray. I don't want to be too close to anyone. It's not like I was even close to anyone before. But I, it took a level of obedience for me to do what I did for that lady. Because I don't even know her. I don't even like her or care for her. I don't even know this woman before. But I know that God led me to do these things. And if I tell you that it did not hurt, I lie. It hurt, but God helped me get over it. I have forgiven her. But you see what she said? She said that God, the, per the voice told her that this person would do similar things. She even saw that one in the dream. But now these kind of things, the devil wants to use it to stop you from helping even good ones. But as God leaves, I know that as as long as I'm led by God, I will do something. But this is how it can go. You can risk your life and do things for people and they will come back and hunt you. It will come back and almost kill you. They will, the same one will try to destroy your ministry. Oh, I've seen some people on this Facebook. They will use my picture all over their page, calling me their spiritual mother or father or whatever they call me. And they will start requesting everyone that follow me. And because people see my picture on their page, people will say, oh, this is the woman of God's follower. This one is harmless. And then they will start to follow them. They use me to get all these people. And then suddenly they remove my picture. And now some of them even speak bad of me now. But it was my name or my face or my things that they used to get the people that are listening to them. It's a lot of manipulations going on on this Facebook. Now I keep quiet like I don't see these things, but I do. That's why some of them, I don't even associate myself with them. They want to call me mother, this and that. I don't even accept it. I don't even reply to them. I just keep quiet because I can see what they are doing. They use it to get my followers to like them, to want to watch them. And then they switch and then they start to introduce new people. And they remove my pictures. Now it's not about me or anything. It's now about what they really wanted to do from the beginning. But they needed people. And some of you have seen some of them. Some of you, God has freed you from some of this manipulation. See, anyone that starts out like that can never go far. You can never go far. And it's just the beginning. There's going to be way more people like that. But me and God has built me to be so strong. And I just see these things happen. They will fade off. Another one will come. They will fade off. It's not easy. That's why you see me in my programs these days. I pray for you. I say, you know what? I, I'm not going to go back and forth with this demon. I'm done with this. You are free. Go. Because when you go far do all this most likely the devil will start to speak to them and some of these people already have some kind of jealousy see if you are someone that you are always naturally jealous or always not grateful it's easy for the devil to get you if you are not content naturally with what god has given you when the devil starts speaking it's easy for you to fall but if you're naturally like someone that you don't have jealousy in you. You are always happy for people. It will be hard for the devil to get you. So be careful what you think on a normal day. I'm telling you, be careful what you think on a normal day. 
Be careful what you're thinking daily. Guard your thoughts or your heart. Make sure you're not always thinking evil. Make sure you're not thinking jealous thoughts. Make sure you're not envying what others have or jealous of what somebody has. I know what God has given me. I know who I am and I'm content with that. That's why you see me, I can walk easily with my cousin and my bishop. I'm not jealous of what they have. If anything, I tell them, pray for me. I will sow seed. Bless me. Let me get your gift. And that's it. But not to go behind them, trying to steal from them or what they have. And then before you know, I want to start rubbing shoulders with them. No, I like the way God has made me unique. I just like the way that I am. I'm okay with the way he made me. I don't want what somebody else has. I want my own. I want my own. I want my own. I want my own. It is well. It's good for you guys to learn. You know what I'm saying? Learn, but always be led by the Spirit of God. And don't because of one person's bad, stop everyone else from getting blessed. Betrayals will always happen. It's just part of life. And sometimes it's through a betrayal that God will announce you. Sometimes it's through a betrayal that God will take you to the next level. So don't be afraid of it happening. There are some that just have to happen. There are some that just have to happen. Like Jesus, um, Jesus Judas is carried had to betray him if it did not happen a lot of things would have gone wrong do you understand if it did not happen in fact jesus would not have accomplished the reason he came are you listening so these things sometimes they have to happen and that's why we must forgive sometimes it is true when like that person is doing all this that people will start hearing of you. People that never heard of you before will start hearing of you and more people will come to you. Some will leave and stuff, but more will come or more will start researching you to see who you are. So sometimes it's through that thing the devil thinks he will use to bring you down that God wants to use to lift you up. All you have to do is stay in the will of God. Always do what God tells you to do. God has told me to do so many things that ordinarily, if I was not a, an obedient daughter of God, I would not do them. Just like sowing seed, there are some people that I've given money to that I know they don't even like me. <laughs> they don't watch me. They don't like me. Like there's this particular one that called me a witch some time ago before I repented. She doesn't watch me. She doesn't really care about me. She doesn't like me. She she ganged up with my best friend when I was still in the world. And they called me a witch. That how am I able to be dreaming and things happen? And I don't even go to church. Called me a witch. But God made me give that woman money. $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard it clearly. Pastor Isaac was there. My mother was there. He told me to give her 1000 And I know this woman does not even like me. She doesn't watch me. <laughs> if it was not for the Spirit of God in me, I never would have done that. But I obeyed. Yeah. I obeyed. So there are sometimes God will tell us or lead us to do some things that people around us would not understand. They will say, why are you doing that? She doesn't deserve it. Don't do it for her. Don't do it for him. Just obey and follow his plan. You understand? Obey and follow his plan. Obey because there's something that he's doing. Sometimes that good deed that you did for them is what will fight for you that see that money you gave them is what will fight for you so if they try to fight you or attack you because of all the good you have done for them that good 
will now begin to fight for you. So God knows what he's doing. Although it hurts sometimes, I'm sure it hurts Jesus when Judas betrayed him. In fact, it hurt him just thinking of what was going to happen to him when he was praying. He kept asking God to take it away from him, but nevertheless, he wants the, his will to come to pass and not his own will. God's will to happen and not his will. I'm sure it hurts, but he had to go through it. Like he had, it had to happen. It had to happen. Because God has a plan. When I heard this audio today, God told me he was the one that showed her the dream. And I was like, Father, I'm praying for this lady. I pray that she doesn't fall for this. Because anyone can fall for this. The devil tried me many times with my bishop. There were times that people in his church will probably make up some stories about him. And I know that they are lying. But another voice will say, what if they are telling the truth? Like, they've tried me so many ways to join those nonsense speaking people to speak against him. Me, I'm talking about me. Just to separate us. But I didn't fall for it. Some of them, the devil will even show you a dream. You will even almost get it confused thinking it was God that revealed it to you. Ayabash. <laughs> Do you know eh, the devil can manipulate you to a point that he can even enter your dreams, appear as an angel of light, and you would think that it's God that is showing it to you. And then you have to sit down and think, this person that is saying all these things about, is this not the same person that has been good to me? I'm telling you, you have to do some serious thinking. You know? Otherwise, it's easy for you to call that your woman of God that you love so much evil. He may show you one dream. You will see someone that looks like me, which I know is not me, of course. With some, maybe people doing like I'm initiating people. You will get up quickly and say, oh, God has revealed. God has revealed to me or oh, the woman of God in the dream. Don't you know that the dreams that you have, it's not everything that comes from God. Some of those dreams are from the devil. Some of them are from your own thinking, like your own imagination or something you've been thinking a lot and suddenly it's appearing in your dream. <laughs> you don't know there are some things that you see in your dream is because of what people have been telling you for a week steadily. Suddenly you saw it in your dream and you are saying, oh, God just showed it to me. I got confirmation, sweetie. It was not God. It was just the thing that you've been thinking. We have to be careful. Because the devil will do everything to separate you from your destiny helper. He will not stop unless you yourself. Man, you guard your heart totally. Otherwise, you see, that's why you see some people fighting people that God used to bless them. And they have no reason to fight them. Like this is the only person. Like that woman that I delivered from the, the giant. She was even calling me Jesus Christ. Belema Abili Jesus Christ. She said no one has ever done what you've done for me. Nobody has loved me like this. Nobody has blessed me or helped me like this. She said no you are Jesus. Belema Abili Jesus Christ. And you will be wondering. But this woman has no reason to be fighting this one. But she did. And anyone can fall for that. Anyone can fall for that. So all of you need to pray that, Father, may the devil not use me fight my, to fight my destiny helper. <laughs> may the devil not use me to fight my destiny helper. I'm talking about my bishop. <laughs> me you see how we are still close to now it was not always like that there were times that it's 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 like i'm seeing something or i'm hearing something or and then and there's something convincing me that it's true 
I will even tell him, I'll say, I don't know why I'm hearing this. I don't know why this is. I know this is not God. He will say, you know, not all dreams are from God. I say, yes, I'm refusing to believe it, but why is this coming? Why is this coming to me? He will pray for me, will pray and will cancel it. Meaning me too, I would have turned to Korah with Bishop. But thank God I didn't. So be careful. Just be careful that the devil doesn't come to you to manipulate you. And when he comes, don't fall for it. Don't fight that one that God used to bless you. Because he wants to push everyone away from you. So that when he attacks you, there will be no one praying for you. There will be no one there to support you. That's what he does. He will separate you from all the people that are there to pray for you. All the people that are there to help you. So that when he attacks you, you will just fall. There will be a big crash. And nobody will care. Except that one that has the spirit of God and is willing to forgive you. Do you know when this woman was doing all she was doing? I was on my way to Dubai with my bishop in the plane. And then I'd already blocked this woman with those two people that are helping her fight me, right? I was in my in the plane going to Dubai, a long flight, and I was praying in tongues. And suddenly I, I started hearing a song that she sang at my program in Philadelphia. And I heard it in her voice. Hey, my Jesus, hey, boobie, hey, boobie, like, like it was her singing it in my ears. I heard it so clearly. And God told me to pray for her. Oh, my God. <laughs> Somebody that is already fighting you, telling your followers things that they should stop watching you, they should not. Like, and now God is telling you to pray for her. After you had blocked her a few days ago, <laughs> I started to pray for her. I started to pray for her. Let me tell you, I started to pray for her seriously. I started to cry. I was using my scarf to cock to clean my face because the tears kept pouring out. And Bishop was sitting right next to me. So he's my witness. I was praying. I was crying and praying. Almost 30 minutes old. In the plane on my way to Dubai. And then I finished my whole scarf was soaked of, of tears because I was really crying. This was like deep prayer. So when I finished and I told Bishop, I said, I don't know what happened, but I started hearing this woman. And God is telling me to pray for her. And I just had to pray for her. You know, like, and Bishop said, it's good that you prayed for her. That God's ways are not our ways. That don't worry, she will soon come and apologize to you. I say, you see, I'm here praying for her. And she doesn't even know it. She's there trying to destroy me. So it takes the someone that has the spirit of God. Someone that loves God. To obey God even at that time. That's how God gets to show you that truly you have forgiven. Truly you have let it go. Truly you are like him. And I'm glad I had a witness, Bishop. I cried for like 30 minutes praying. And then guess what? To confirm what I'm saying. Huh? My cousin. See you. See, guess what? To confirm what I'm saying, my cousin, Pastor Isaac was doing a deliverance after that. And he was not even talking about this woman in the deliverance. Suddenly the demon said, your cousin, why is your cousin so nice? Why is she like that? It was Pastor Isaac that told me. I think he even had it on a recording, but I can't find it now. Say, why did she pray for that woman? Why is she praying for that woman? After all the woman did for her, your cousin still prayed for her. That we were going to attack her in Liberia. But because of your cousin's prayer, we did it. Oh my God, when Pastor Isaac was telling me this thing, I was like, oh my God, Jesus. I said, Pastor, that thing came so strong on me in the plane. I had to pray. He said, why is she like that? 
She was not supposed to pray for her. So that is what the devil wanted. That's why he caused that. That's why he did that. So that nobody will be praying for you. So that the only one that can help you will run from you. Can't you see? The real enemy is the devil. He's strategic. He removes people that helped you. People that are willing to help you. From you. So you can be alone. So when he strikes, when he attacks you, there's nobody that cares about you. So you can fall. So you can just die. Somebody say they listen to that deliverance. It's, from, it's a lady from Liberia. God bless you. Because it's pastor that told me that. He said, why did she pray for her? We were going to deal with her, but your cousin prayed for her. Why did she pray for her after everything she did to her? I'm like, wow. I started having chills. I was speaking in tongues. I said, Father, I'm so glad I obeyed you. I'm so glad I prayed. Because even though somebody hurts you, you don't wish them dead. You don't, it's like, you're not that, you're not like hating them. I want them to die. No, you just want them to repent and see where they went wrong. And maybe go ask for forgiveness or just, you know, make peace. Because the enemy here, the common enemy that all of us have is the devil. So like a follower that loves me so much and the devil does this. It's because he knows that maybe she has a covering here and he wants to take her away from her covering. You that the pastor of your church has been good to you, helping you with your bills when you don't have money, doing so much. And another pastor is coming, telling you bad things about your pastor. And suddenly you want to believe and leave the church, forgetting all the good things the man has done. It's because he wants to draw you away from your covering. See, I didn't even know I was going to talk about this, but God is taking me there. Don't leave where God placed you because of what somebody is saying about that person. What is God telling you about that person? Hold on to that. Or what did you experience while you were there with that person? Hold on to that. Don't be manipulated. Sometimes they come in form of pastors. Pastors actually go these days to call people, message people, say, do you know that church you are in? That's not where you're supposed to be. Do you know that man of God? That's not the man of God for you. Do you know that that person is not going to let you grow? Like, why would you leave your busy church and come to messaging me, telling me all these things? Haven't you wondered? Like, look at me now, so drained and tired from all this work that I've been doing. Why would I spend this little time I have to be messaging people to leave their man of God or woman of God or this? Why would I do that? I don't even have time for myself. So when you see somebody that is so easily available to message you and to be telling you crap about somebody, it's because they are an agent. The devil is using them as an agent at that time. No respectable man of God will leave his church or his page and come message you trying to pull you out of where God has placed you. You need to reason before you act. Before you go and bite the hand that is feeding you right now. Before you go and bring a curse upon yourself. Because tomorrow you will come back apologize and say I'm sorry. But now you've lost, that, you've lost that position that you had before. You've lost that connection or that friendship you had before. In fact, you can't even go back there because of shame. You've lost something. And now people see you as a traitor. People see you as different. And even though you have changed, it's going to be a little hard for, for you to be redeemed. I'm telling you, or restored. Don't fall for it. His goal is to mess you up, to kill you, to destroy you. See, if any time you are tired of a place or a person, try as much as possible to walk away peacefully. I'm telling you, try as much as possible to walk away peacefully. Don't burn bridges because you might need that bridge again one day. Try as much as possible to be at peace with all men. 
Because you may think right now, I don't need you right now, but you don't know what's coming in two years. You don't know what's coming in three years. You don't know what's coming in two months. You may need that person again. Even if you want to be released from a church, maybe you don't feel like you should be there anymore. Don't spread rumor about the pastor. You can go up to him. Say, God is leading me to leave now. I think my time here is up. Man of God, can you please bless me so I can go to the next place? He may be sad that you're leaving. But at least he will tell you, well, whenever you decide to come back, you are free to come. But it was a good way. When he thinks of you, he would think of how you left. It was not something that gave him heart attack. Do you see what I'm saying? Because you may come back after a few months. Maybe you don't like anywhere you go. Or maybe you're still having dreams of that place. And they will welcome you because you were never a troublesome person. Do you understand what I'm saying? But if you go and you scatter the place, talk all these things, even if God tells you to come back, sometimes you may still refuse because you know the kind of damage you caused in that place. Don't do that. It's not everyone that is preaching online that was sent by God. The devil has his own disciples too. The devil has his own apostles too. The devil has his own preachers too. Don't just say, well, a man of God told me this thing. Who is this man of God? Why is he telling you this? Do you understand? Who is he? Why is he telling you this? I was reading 2 Corinthians today. I got to um, chapter 11. And I was reading, I got to... um, Verse 13, it said, these people are false prophets. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 11. He said, these people are false prophets, false apostles. They are deceitful workers who disguise themselves as apostles of Christ. As I'm talking to you now, this scripture came to me. He said, these people are false apostles. They are deceitful workers who disguise themselves as apostles of Christ. But I'm not surprised. Even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no wonder that his servants, are you listening? He has his own servants. He said, so it is no wonder that his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. In the end, they will get the punishment their wicked deeds deserve. He said, I am not surprised Because even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So sometimes that angel you thought you saw is not really an angel of light. It's the devil. Sometimes that dream that you saw is manipulation. It's not really God that showed you that dream. That dream you think that, oh, is this the reason why you should go and be cursing your pastor, fighting your pastor, doing a Facebook post, insulting your pastor. That dream is not from God. Even though you are convinced that, oh, it has to be God that showed it to me. He said the devil can disguise himself as an angel of light. He says, so it is no wonder that his servants, his servants, meaning he has servants. Meaning the devil has his own servants. Also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. In the end, they will get the punishment their wicked deeds deserve. So which servant are you talking to? Is it God's servant or the agent of the devil or the devil's servants? Be careful. Now, I didn't think I was going to enter here, but God is the one that speaks through me. So I believe that somebody has been blessed. I'm going to let you guys go. And I'm going to come back at 6 o'clock in the evening, which is four hours away. And that will end day one of our three days fasting. Read the book of Mark. Listen to video audio one and two if you miss. I also blessed water in audio two for cleansing and deliverance. Now we're going to show the Atlanta program, the first four hours of it. So once I get off now in the studio, they will come live. For those of you that 
were not there, or even if you were there, I know you want to watch it. Make sure you share. I'm going to be watching with you guys. Love you guys. I'll see you soon. It is well with you. Bye-bye.